Hello and congratulations. Well done. You've purchased the Prismatoscape Interaction Plugin. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set it up in your project. So before we even think about getting started, we need to go to our project. Mine is called Prismatica, funnily enough. And we need to go to the plugins folder. Now, if you are getting this from Gumroad, you'll need to put your zip folder into this plugins folder, right click it, extract it, and you'll see the Prismatoscape thing here. If you are just doing it from the Epic Marketplace, it will be automatically added to your engine files. So Unreal Engine, whatever the version is, engine, then plugins, marketplace, and then it will be in there. So then the last thing to do before we get started is to go to edit. We're going to go to project settings, and we're just going to make sure that if we search virtual texture or texture, uh, enable virtual texture support is ticked because we are going to be using runtime virtual textures. And then lastly, lastly, but not leastly, leastly, we go to edit. We're going to go to plugins. Uh, we're going to get Niagara fluids and we're going to tick that just because there's a few little dependencies in the Niagara system. You know how unreal is sometimes. And then you should be able to just, yeah, tick Prismatoscape. It's good to go. So let's just jump straight into it. We have our blank folder right here. Uh, this one's actually nested in the, the, the plugin folder, but just pretend that it's your folder. First thing we're going to do, we are going to right click. We are going to go new blueprint class and we are going to click all classes and we're going to look for the Prismatoscape manager right there. We're going to hit select. We're going to call this your projects Prismatoscape manager. So the reason we're creating a child actor of the, you know, of the, of that class uh, is so you can put all of your own settings on it. So let's get our Prismatoscape manager and we will just pop it into the world. Uh, now, if we actually go into this, you can see that we have all of our defaults in our details panel. If you're not seeing that, you can go to window, go to details. Now, these are just all of our default variables where we have things like our input resolution, the size of the simulated area around the player, our deform resolution, as well as, you know, our wind resolution, all of our resolutions, uh, the material parameter collection that we want to be writing values to. So if you have your own material parameter collection, feel free to use yours. And that's about it. Now, another important thing to set up before we get fully started is some runtime virtual texture volumes that are drawing to our Prismatoscape runtime virtual textures and we are going to go to in here runtime virtual texture volume we're going to drag that into the world and we'll just press g so that we can see it uh, you can see that this one is really small you can snap it to your landscape and you know auto size it and whatnot or you can just manually place it and size it. I've got some that I prepared earlier because this test level isn't using a landscape. We're going to resize them anyway, so whatever. Um, so here's our runtime virtual texture volume. Now we are going to need three of these in total. One of them needs to draw to the Prismatoscape landscape height. One of them needs to draw to the Prismatoscape water height. And one of them needs to draw to the Prismatoscape water data. Now, all of these runtime virtual textures exist in the Prismatoscape plugin content folder, so you don't need to manually create them. And these are only really used for this plugin. Great. Now, anything that you want to use as a interactable surface needs to be drawing to the height runtime virtual texture, because the way that we actually draw to our Niagara simulation is by comparing the mathematical positions of our predefined capsules to the RVT height map. So we're not using any traces and we're not using any, you know, collisions or anything like that. It's all passive. It's all GPU based. So it's all thumbs up. However, you do need to make sure that your materials that you're using, so your master materials and stuff are outputting 
their world position to the world height RVT output, just so that if they do want to be enabled to the RVT, you know, height thingo, then they can be. So the other two runtime virtual textures are the water height runtime virtual texture, which water planes will draw to. You can see that the water has its own interaction height compared to the landscape. And then the last one is the water data runtime virtual texture, which is just used for things like excluding puddles uh, and using vertex color to draw or exclude puddles from. Right, and now that we have our three runtime virtual texture volumes set up, we are ready for the next step. So if we hit play, you can see that nothing is happening. And that's because we don't have our draw components on our character or on, you know, any of our objects and stuff. There are a few default components. So if you go into the Prismatoscape content folder and you go to the components, uh, you can see that we have some components already set up in here. The parent component is draw component. All this component does is just say, I should be getting drawn and it will subscribe itself to the manager. Then there are three other children of that base class being the wind components, the deform components and the bubble components, interaction bubble components. The only differentiation between those three classes is that they have a function called get wind capsules. The bubble has a get bubble location and radius uh, and the deform component has a get deform capsules. So in order for our character to draw to our stuff, we're just going to go new blueprint class. We are going to go to deform character, prismatoscape deform component character, hit select. This is called your character deformer. We're going to yeet into it. So by default, we have some bone chains. Uh, this basically describes a limb of the character. So we've got the head here, which is defined by the head and a bone that my characters have called the hair root. Uh, you might want to add a socket to the, the top of your head on your character and use that. Uh, and we also have the radius 10 to 15 uh, units. So each of these is a, a bone chain. Uh, so for the arms, for example, we have three bones. We have the upper arm, lower arm, and the hand. And this will just draw capsules from that bone to that bone to that bone. And we also specify a radius for each of those points just in a parallel array because structs and maps are just really hard to work with. So all of these are predefined. You may need to change them if you're not seeing them. And then we have the bone profiles. And these profiles just say which bone chains do we want to draw at any given time. So most of the time your character, you only want their feet to be drawing to the ground. So if we look at the only feet profile, we can say, let's draw the left foot and the right foot. Now there is a variable called the active profile. So you can change this at runtime so that, you know, it starts on only feet, but then when your character falls over or enters a body of water, uh, you start to draw the full body. Or you could just have the waist down or something if your character is just like half submerged in water. Basically, the less capsules that you're drawing at any given time, the better the performance is. So let's jump out. Let's go to our character. Hello, player character. We're going to add the your character deformer. It is now a component on our character actor. It's going to automatically grab the scally mesh um, and you can see now we are leaving footprints and we're also interacting with the grass so these deform capsules draw to the surface and the water simulations as well as the deform render target for you know the grass and the, the lower foliage fantastic so now all we need to do is start interacting with these bushes for which we can just use the default component called add uh, bubble 
Prismatoscape Interaction Bubble component. We've now added that to our character. Now keep in mind, you can, instead of making a child of one of these components, you can just put it on an actor and set different default values from the actor itself. So we can say, okay, interaction bubble, radius, uh, 100 is good. The height offset gets set manually if the component finds a capsule component to latch onto. Um, otherwise, you might want to specify that manually. That just means, you know, if your actor origin is at the pelvis of a character, uh, we want it to be drawing at the feet of the character. So that will be done automatically for most characters. But if you're putting this component on something else, you might want to you know, specify that manually. And aside from that, nothing. This is good to go. Character is good to go. We are now interacting with the bushes. And the bushes jiggle. And everything is awesome. Well, congratulations. You are now using the Prismatoscape plugin. So the other way that we can interact with our simulations is using pulses. So for example, I have a reference to the Prismatoscape manager. Uh, you could do this through a subsystem if you have, you know, some sort of weather interaction subsystem or something or just on begin play get actor of class get the manager save a reference to it and then what we can do with that is if we have a reference to our manager we can add pulse either deform or wind pulse at location so this pulse data we can go make we can set a duration i wouldn't recommend setting a duration to zero uh, at least 0.1 or 0.2 is good uh, the start time is get game time in seconds. This might not be there in the version that you have. I might just be doing it inside the function itself, but just in case. Uh, the strength curve, you'll need to look up Prismatiscape. We've got pulse burst, which is just, it starts at 100% and falls off to zero over the duration. And then we've got the whoosh, which is a kind of sinusoidal curve it starts at zero it smoothly goes up to one and then back down to zero so let's do a whoosh and then the draw shape is a capsule start location and radius end location and radius start velocity and strength and end velocity and strength so these are all just vector fours which get passed into the niagara system and we can just go make you see we've got XYZ. So the XYZ is the location and the radius is in the alpha. And same here, the, for these ones, oh, uh, for these bottom two, the XYZ is the velocity and W is the strength. So here's one that I prepared earlier. I've got my cursor position, which, you know, I do in my own game. We're just getting the previous frames position of it and the, the current position of it. Those are our locations. The radius is 15. The velocity is the previous minus the current, um, some factor. And then that just goes into our draw shape. The curve is a whoosh. The start time is game time in seconds. And the duration is very short. And then I'm just periodically calling add wind pulse at location and add form pulse at location so you can see here that i'm drawing these you know deform and wind pulses uh, and these aren't tied to any given actor so if you've got something like an explosion or something really temporary like uh, you know when your character jumps you want to add some whoosh then this is what you would use for that and it can also work with the the deform stuff you know, as an example, let's add a little puff when our character jumps. So let's just go to the player character. Let's just go to our space bar. We're playing jump. We're playing a montage. This is just very, you know, this is just for the plugin demo character. Uh, let's just get our manager. We're going to add pulse at location, just a wind pulse this time. And we are going to make pulse data. The duration 0.2 is fine. Start time is game time in seconds, which again, you may not need to input. The curve is going to be a prism burst. 
and the draw shape. So we're going to get our capsule component. We are going to get world location. We're going to get the half height and we are going to subtract a vector. I'm going to split that and put the half height into the Z. So we've now moved it from the pelvis to the feet of the character. That is going to be our X, Y, and Z. The radius is going to be 50. It's going to be a nice big puff. Um, we can put the same into both places. Uh, now for the velocity, we want the velocity to be pointing downwards. So when wind or the deform stuff's velocity goes downwards, it creates a vector field, so like omnidirectional. Uh, so let's just do minus 400. So now when I press jump, not when I actually do jump, we are going to add a wind pulse at location. So if we look here and we now jump, you can see that everything goes whoosh. We are like a superhero uh, or a very gassy person. Bam. Jump. Pulse. Jump. Pulse. Very cool. It's just that easy. 